Hello, everyone, and welcome to the University of King's College uh, journalism webinar. Thank you so much for, uh, for being here today. So um, I'll just wait for everyone to kind of get settled in. Um, beforehand, I just want to tell you a little bit about some, uh, I guess, some Zoom housekeeping. So um, you'll see at the bottom, there's a Q&A function and a chat function. Uh, I do want to separate those two a little bit. So the Q&A function at the end of this presentation for about 15 or 20 minutes, we'll have a Q&A where you can ask any one of the panelists uh, a question. Um, for that, please put that into the Q&A um, slot. The chat slot um, is for if anyone here had any questions they wanted you to respond to, kind of like a group question, you can respond in the chat. Or if there's a technical issue, if you can't hear us, if you can't see us, if something um, technically is, is not working, please let us know um, in, in the chat. So yes, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Josh. I am a uh, senior recruitment officer here with the University of King's College, so I can answer any questions about admissions. Um, I also did the program. I, I graduated with a Bachelor of Journalism Honors degree in 2019. And uh, first of all, I'll introduce um, Brian Daly, who's uh, one of our professors here at King. So Brian, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure thing. Uh, yeah, Assistant Professor of Journalism. Glad to be here with everybody. I'm uh, relatively new to King's. It's my second year teaching and I teach all three main streams in the journalism program, which we'll talk about tonight. Thank you, Brian. And Jenna, would you like to uh, introduce yourself? Uh, hi, my name is Jenna, and I am a first year student at King's. So far, I've only done one semester, but enjoying every minute of it. And um, Jenna, would you mind saying that, where you're from? Just Yeah, so I'm from Guelph, Ontario. Um, actually, I just got back from King's a few days ago. We're done exams quite a bit earlier than most other universities, luckily, um, or unluckily, for me, because I miss it very much and would like to go back. <laughs> um, I'm glad to hear it. And um, David, would you like to talk about a little bit, a bit about your journalism background and, uh, of course, where, where you're from as well, if you don't mind? Sure. Um, hi, I'm David Schumann. Uh, I am in fourth year journalism at King's. I also have a, I'm going, uh, doing a combined honors in sustainability at Dalhousie. Uh, I Currently, I'm the editor-in-chief of the Dalhousie Gazette, and I have some other campus journalism experience. Uh, I also uh, like to do community journalism in my hometown in my free time. Uh, just this past semester, I did the fourth year video workshop with Brian. Wonderful. And I should also mention, so um, myself and David are, are from Nova Scotia. Jenna is from Ontario. Um, sorry, Brian, I'm not, I'm not sure where you're from. Montreal. Montreal, wonderful. And I'm, I'm also the Western Canadian um, recruiter for King. So we kind of have the whole uh, country covered here too. If you have any questions about what it's like living in Halifax from different regions of Canada, we can help answer those questions too. So let's, let's get started here. Just going to uh, share the presentation. So before we get going, I'd just like to spend a few moments um, talking about the land that um, we sit on. So the University of King's College, it's in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And that is the uh, colonial name for Shibuktuk, which is um, a part of Mi'kmaq. So Mi'kmaq is the territory of the Mi'kmaq people who are the in indigenous um, peoples of, of this region. A, a lot of Atlant, not all of it, but a lot of Atlantic Canada is um, belongs to the Mi'kmaq people in a, in a place called Mi'kma'ki. And um, everyone who lives in Mi'kma'ki are subject to the uh, peace and friendship treaties that call for peaceful coexistence among everyone who lives on, on this land. And as I mentioned earlier, Halifax um, is known as Shibuktuk. So Shibuktuk means Great Harbor. Um, picture you're seeing here is a very small part of the Halifax Harbor. It's 
um, one of the largest natural harbors in the world, actually. And um, right there, you can see um, downtown Halifax. But, oh, excuse me. We also like to um, acknowledge that um, Nova Scotia is has been um, living off the wealth of um, our African Nova, African Canadians here in uh, here in Nova Scotia. They've been a part of this province for over four hundred years, and um, we recognize the contributions they've had to um, Nova Scotian society and and our culture as well. So here is Kings. So Kings, we're a small school located in, of course, Halifax or Shibuktuk. Um, this is the campus right here. So it's actually a, a wonderful community to go to school because um, you're all we're all close together. Um, here, the journalism school is here on the second floor, but the library is over here. Um, the residences are on this side and this side. Um, Meal Hall is also in this building as well. So at Kings, you're always crisscrossing each other, um, seeing people you know and meeting people all the time. There's only a thousand students at Kings, so it's a quite a small and, uh, and close-knit community in that way. And um, the school itself, it's also about a 20-minute walk from downtown Halifax. So um, within a 20-minute radius, there's grocery stores, um, a Canadian Tire, pharmacy, nightlife, whatever you're looking for um, is within a 20 minute radius of Kings. But sometimes, you know, especially in, in, in first year, um, where a lot of your classes take place on the Kings campus, there could be days where you don't leave this square because your meal hall is here, the, the gym is right here, the library is over here. Um, so it's a, it's a quite um, kind of close knit community. However, I will say it's harder to um, stay on the King's campus as a journalism student because um, your job is get, getting off this little square and going to the community and finding stories and sharing them. But King's, even though we're a smaller school, we're a part of a much um, larger institution uh, called Dalhousie University. Uh, so Dalhousie University, they have uh, 19,000 students and us and Dal, we share the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences the Faculty of Science and the Fountain School of Performing Arts. So that would be about music and theater. So uh, with your, if you do go to King's do journalism, um, if that's, if you did the honors program, the honors program makes up about half of what you're studying in university. You have another half of um, academic requirements that you need to make up. So um, with King's and Dalhousie, uh, partnership, there's a lot of opportunities to um, explore different areas of interest academically. Um, there's over 50 different programs in the arts, sciences, and performing arts that you can do um, with us. So even though you're coming to King's, which is a small school where um, you go on campus and you'll recognize a lot of faces on campus every time you go there, you're not sacrificing any of the, uh, the program options or even the shared resources that you can see to the bottom right here. Um, that exists um, at a larger school. You, you get the best of both worlds. And um, I mean, for me personally, I did journalism at King's and I did the international development program at Dalhousie. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit in a second, but um, David and Jenna also worked uh, work for the Dalhousie student newspaper, the Dalhousie Gazette. So there's, uh, there's a lot of um, richness to be a part of a kind of a smaller school and a, a bigger school at the same time. So if you look at this, screen right here. Kings is where the white line is. And from this street up is, is Dalhousie University. And Halifax. Um, so this is another, another picture of downtown Halifax right here. Um, we're a city of about 450,000 people. So we're not a big city like Toronto, Calgary, Vancouver, but we're not small either. We're, we're kind of right in the middle. Um, almost anything you can possibly need you can find in the city, whether it's uh, sporting events, um, restaurants from all different kinds of, uh, of cultures, um, art galleries, uh, there's a lot of museums, here's a lot of history in the city with um, being one of the oldest cities in Canada. Um, so kind of whatever you're, you're looking for in a city, you can probably find it here in Halifax. Um, just as a size comparable, it's similar to maybe like London, Ontario, or 
Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Um, we're a bit bigger than Victoria, BC, but that's kind of the uh, the size of city um, that you're looking at here here in Halifax. So not the biggest, but not the smallest either. So now I'll pass it off to uh, Brian to talk a bit more about the uh, about the journalism program. Thanks a lot, Josh. Um, so King's is uh, quite unique amongst Canadian universities. They're a first a shared first year throughout all programs. So all King's students do a common year called the foundation year where you'll all be together. You'll all have a chance uh, to be uh, with your schoolmates from other programs. Um, and then those of you who choose journalism have a year long course broken into two called Foundations of Journalism. This is a course that's taught by my colleague, Trina Roche, who's a tremendous uh, journalist. She worked for Aboriginal People's Television for a number of years and she joined the faculty in 2021 alongside me. And um, in Foundations of Journalism, you, it's self-explanatory. You're, you're getting an introduction to journalism, um, getting an idea of where journalism intersects with society. It's good to have that course alongside the other first year courses because foundation year in a nutshell is telling you how we as a human race got to where we are right now. And then journalism, we'll be talking about how uh, the profession of journalism intersects with that. Uh, you'll be learning uh, things like ethics and, you know, why story, why certain stories are picked by the media and why others are not. Um, and for throughout that whole year, it'll be getting you ready for what happens in subsequent years. Now, there, I'm talking about for those of you who are taking the Bachelor of Journalism with Honors program, which is a four year undergraduate program. I did a similar program at uh, TMU, previously known as Ryerson. Um, if we can advance the slides here, the um, next thing is once you get into second and third year is where increasingly you'll be doing more journalism, more journalism courses. Um, and in those uh, years is where you start, it starts to become real because you will not only be learning about the basics of how to write stories, but you will also be uh, honing them to the point where the goal is to be published on The Signal. We have a, a website called The Signal. It's a multi-platform portal. Uh, it has uh, uh, text-based journalism, audio and video journalism. So in second year, you would be focusing on getting text stories up on The Signal. And this is, this is a website that we, uh, our alumni love. Uh, people from around the world message us to say that they read it. So you're, it's real now. Your, your stories are going to be just right there alongside stories from other news organizations around the world. And uh, so it's a really fun opportunity to push yourself and um, uh, learn about some of the basics uh, in a news story that would allow you to be published. And then in third year, not only do you continue to do text-based journalism, but we now have also at King's uh, audio and video. So you have a chance to do podcasting in third year, that's an elective course. And you also have a, a course called Advanced Reporting 2, which is a chance for you to learn how to uh, shoot and edit and put together video stories and even do a live stream show uh, with one of the finest television journalists in Canada. Her name is Catherine Harrop. And our audio specialist is Pauline Dakin. These are veteran journalists who put in a, quite a bit of time at the CBC. And so you're learning from the best in the industry there. Um, what do we have next? Fourth year? Right. So in fourth year, uh, you begin with your capstone project, the honors project. Think of it as a magazine length story, 1500 words on a topic related to media. If you go to the signal right now, all the top stories on signalhfx.ca are honors projects from our fourth year students. And uh, that's uh, really a chance to hone your ability to tell stories at length. And um, once the honors project uh, is over uh, around the, the beginning of November, uh, you uh, spend the remainder of your time at King's in workshops. These are labs. We, we replicate, replicate newsrooms. 
as closely as we can at King's. You see the different options. News workshop, that's the workshop where you actually populate the signal. You take in all the stories, you edit them, you lay them out, and uh, the professor hits publish and they're out there and you'll get a chance in fourth year to actually do that publishing yourself. Audio, they run a weekly podcast. Video, which is a course that I teach, we run a weekly newscast on video streamed on YouTube. Uh, and then advanced audio and video are quite something. That's where you get to do documentary length pieces. So you spend six weeks in all these workshops and in adv advanced audio and video, you spend six weeks working on just one story. We also have creative nonfiction with uh, David Swick and that's where you learn, uh, you get an introduction to publishing for you who love writing and love it so much that you wanna write a book, uh, which I've done. Writing a book is, is, is incredible, incredible, uh, long involved, intimate uh, relationship with one topic for, in my case, it took me years to write. And so it is quite something to learn that. Investigative is just about the finest level of journalism there is. That's public interest journalism, breaking the big story uh, with um, David Mackay, who's one of the top uh, investigative journalists in Canada. The entire class or the entire workshop works on one big investigation and tries to get to the bottom of some of the big issues here in Canada. Then the uh, second to last thing you do at King's is your internship. Approximately a month, could be as much as six weeks uh, in uh, a newsroom that uh, is good a good fit for you. So if you love uh, writing, uh, we have students who've done time uh, in their internships in publishing at publishing companies or at magazines, digital publications. And those of you who um, prefer um, being on camera, using the camera, uh, we have uh, internships at uh, television stations as well as internships at uh, the CBC where they do television and radio and web. Um, but it's quite wide open as to where you can spend the six weeks. And the goal there, of course, is to uh, impress um, the uh, news leaders to the point where they, uh, they give you a job. And we have a number of alum alumni who have been hired out of those internships. And then uh, the the uh, the uh, the one and only graduation it, it comes uh, at the very end in May, and that's quite a uh, exciting time to see everybody cross the st stage and receive uh, their uh, their degrees. And so that's the Bachelor of Journalism with Honors uh, program at Kings. Uh, thank, thank you. Yeah, Brian, I just want to give a chance for um, Jenna and David to uh, chime in here as people who are. In different ends of the um, the Bachelor of Journalism Honors Program, Jenna in her first year, David in his fourth year. So I'll start with you, Jenna. Um, as someone who's just completed their first semester, first year, what is what have you been learning? What is what has that been like for you? So first semester was really just been like just a, an overall introduction to journalism. I was the editor in chief of my high school's paper, and I thought I knew what I was talking about until I came to Kings. And they essentially like tore down in the best way and just rebuilt like all of my skills and knowledge. And I can see the change in my writing skills and in my reporting skills since coming here. Um, and just overall, there's a really big focus for a semester on reporting, actually going out and talking to people, which is talking to people you don't know, which is really daunting at first. But even after the first few times you do, it becomes much easier and in fact, like enjoyable. Um, and another big focus is reporting in relation to indigenous peoples and Mi Mi'kmaq specifically. And I already feel like I have a much deeper appreciation for and knowledge of not only the skills required, uh, but the industry itself that I know will only continue to grow as I progress through my years at King's. Thanks, Jenna. And uh, now I'll pass it off to um, David. Um, you're, you just completed your, um, your honors project and your first workshop. Um, what is that in, in fourth year? What is what has that experience been been like for you? It's it's really taking what we've learned over the last three years, applying it, and kicking it into overdrive. Um, as Brian mentioned in. Uh, second and third year, we get a little bit of, say, visual storytelling experience. But when I did the the six week video workshop over the last six weeks, or yeah, six weeks, sorry, um, it, it was it was really just taking everything I've learned and making uh, 
the the best stories I can out of it. And it's taking everything and making something that you can be proud of out of it. Yeah. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks to both of you. And um, we'll, we'll pass it off to uh, Brian once again to uh, talk a bit about the, the minor option because the, the, the BJH, the Bachelor of Journalism Minor Program is, is not the only way you can uh, you know, pursue journalism here at King's. That's right. We have several streams. One is the minor in journalism studies, and that's for people who uh, are studying a lot of times at Dow, um, studying various disciplines. And uh, we've got some tremendous students in the minor as well. And um, the um, other thing uh, that we do, what do we have? Uh, NASCAD students also do a minor in journalism. So we uh, provide um, in journalism instruction to a wide range of students. And in the minor in journalism studies, you uh, do take though that first year course foundations of journalism as well as some of the core courses in second year uh, and third year what uh, uh, you would uh, not take as a journalism minor are the workshops in fourth year but you still get a good solid grounding in the basics of journalism let's remember that journalism at, at its root is about communication and um, so if you were if, well, for example we have so many lawyers who minored in journalism at King's. And so we have a number of other uh, people and disciplines where communication is important and they recognize that. And so they um, took that minor, um, learned from uh, from us, uh, and then moved on into other fields as well. And so we, we like to believe that our journalism is a bridge to many different industries because of the fact that you're uh, honing your writing skills to a fine point. Uh, through our reporting classes, as well as copy editing, which is another course that I teach where you learn uh, about the Canadian Press style book and how to edit other people's work, which comes in handy in many different places, right? If you think about, uh, you might be in a position where you might have to oversee the website at the company you work for. You want to have that skill set to be able to spot errors in other people's work and make sure that the website doesn't have any annoying errors in it. And so uh, we teach writing, we teach editing. And then, of course, if you're taking the uh, podcasting and the uh, video journalism courses, you're learning about on-camera presentation. And who doesn't need that? Um, certainly, probably many of the lawyers out there who um, uh, took uh, King's journalism courses are, are thankful when they're in front of a court that they did spend some time learning about the basics of how to phrase and how to deliver certain lines and uh, speak in a in a natural sounding voice, not rush. All those all those technical skills are things that we teach you uh, in the minor journalism studies. Um, are we going to talk about our upper class uh, courses as well, or? Uh... Um, no, we'll, we'll talk about the um, upper class. I think we have a, a, a webinar pl uh, planned in um, in the works for January for that. And right now, um, we're just going to focus on the uh, of the options for the undergraduates. But I should, I since Brian did mention, we should we should bring it up if you're. Um, there's also some upper class options as well. Brian, do you want to give like just a quick quick overview of kind of what the the those options are? For sure. We uh, offer a one-year Bachelor of Journalism, as well as a Master of Journalism. Uh, so that's for, uh, for students who already have an undergraduate degree and want to, in the case of the, is the fourth year of the BJH, where you're doing uh, workshops and you're doing the internship, uh, that's essentially what the BJ is. It's just one year. And then uh, you get out into the workforce after having done, I guess you could say a quick, very quick download uh, of uh, journalism. Uh, the master's is more involved. It's a two-year program. Uh, master's degrees are, are, are very important and very valuable. This is where you uh, learn your discipline at a much a more detailed level. So in the master of journalism, they spend three semesters working on a... Um, professional project, which is a very lengthy piece of journalism, as well as other advanced courses. And so uh, that's something you might want to think about if, you do, if you've already done an undergraduate degree or uh, if you uh, want to continue to learn uh, journalism at an even more advanced level. Yeah, Josh, you're, you're yeah. muted. The, uh, the the classic this the classic Zoom mistake talking when you when, when you're muted. Um, and um, Brian, I just want to go back to what you're saying with the, uh, the the minor program. You're mentioning how 
I mean, obviously journalism school will help you um, become a journalist, but you're mentioning that how those skills can relate to different careers, like being a lawyer, for example. Could you just touch on um, some career outcomes for people who, uh, who who do journalism here at King's? Yes. Um, well, um, I, I, the, one, the students who I know best who are alumni of King's are working in the news industry. Uh, King's uh, sends uh, quite, a, quite a number of um, uh, graduates to the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, given that we are teaching um, all teaching all three main platforms. We're teaching certainly text-based journalism as well as audio and video. And the CBC is the largest news organization in the country, and also ha and has uh, uh, bureaus in every corner of the country, and also um, broadcasts in all three of those platforms. So that is a very significant. Um, uh, place for uh, King's graduates to go. But some, some King's graduates don't want to work in large corporations. And so we, we send um, uh, quite a few graduates to smaller um, organizations, including in publishing. Because remember, I mentioned that we do teach what, what amounts to book writing here at King's. And so some people who want to work in publishing work for those small companies and office that might only have 10 or fewer people. You have those options uh, here at King's. We give you that. And then we do have people who uh, focus, uh, want to focus on specific um, uh, causes or specific corporations that have uh, a very distinct mission uh, where you're not, you wouldn't be reporting generally on Canada, but rather working in communications. And so we have a number of graduates who've gone on to work in uh, corporate communications uh, for various companies. I know somebody who works as an independent communications specialist. And there's no doubt that the writing and the uh, uh, web skills that uh, he learned at King's help him in the communications. We also have a recent graduate who works for the federal government, uh, the uh, Veterans Pension Review Board as a communications specialist in Prince Edward Island, where there's a lot of, uh, there are quite a few jobs in Veterans Affairs. And so that, uh, that um, uh, young man is doing very well for himself. A lot of writers, a lot of published authors, many of whom work at King's now, as mentors or professors on the writing side of our of our program. And uh, we do have um, a number of people in television, uh, very prominent, uh, well, there are a number of people, but for example, the executive producer of CBC Ottawa, Felice Chin is a graduate of King's and she's a very powerful media executive. And so uh, this is a university where you can learn and a program where you can learn uh, a number of different skills that are transferable, not only within the industry, but outside as well. Thank you. And uh, just um, touching on some uh, some alumni here, um, we have um, Stephanie Nolan, who graduated um, in about uh, thir almost you know, 30 years ago now, but she's um, done excellent work traveling the globe, working a lot for the Global Mail. And now she's with uh, the New York Times as a global health reporter. Um, there's also um, Paul McLeod, who is uh, Capitol Hill reporter for BuzzFeed, so he's he's in Washington, um, reporting on the, uh, you know, arguably the most um, influential um, government in, in in the world. And uh, we also have Arwen Kidd. So if you're somebody who's looking to travel with with journalism, I know that's uh, a question I receive a lot. Well, Arwen, she's a a media consultant and filmmaker in West Africa. I believe she's um, situated in Sierra Leone. Uh, she's also worked as a uh, um, communications um, officer in uh, for, for the UN as well. So she's done a lot of great work um, abroad. Um, we have Adrian Lee, who's an opinions editor with the Global Mail. And uh, if you're interested in sports, um, Laura Armstrong, she um, used to report on the Blue Jays for the Toronto Star, and now she's a uh, uh, senior director of communications for the Canadian Premier uh, Soccer League. Um, yeah, Brian, is there anything else you'd like to mention about you know, alumni or, or um, career outcomes before we head off to the next slide? Yeah, well, let's remember that a number of uh, our professors here at King's attended King's. One of the things that uh, you want to think about in education is that there is a direct correlation uh, between um, the amount of time you spend um, uh, learning and then what you're able to do with it. So once you have a postgraduate degree, a master's degree, that puts you in a position to be able to apply to be a professor. 
uh, at any number of universities because you've learned your craft to such a degree that you're now uh, in a position to be able to teach it. And so I know that could be a long way off for some of you, but not that far off. Um, something you might want to think about is how far you want to pursue your learning beyond getting an undergraduate degree. Uh, I got, uh, or I'm working on my postgraduate degree now. Um, I think that uh, in hindsight, I, I, might, I might have done that earlier, might have done that, uh, yeah, earlier for sure, because that puts you in position uh, to, uh, get, well, it's giving back, uh, uh, you know, when you're a professor, you get a chance to share what you know with others. And so, uh, a number of our uh, alumni have, you know, have graduated from the master's program, and so they're in position now to get into leadership positions as well as academia and many other options. And um, well, thanks, Brian. So I'll uh, just quickly glance over the for admissions. Um, so we have two um, different admission streams. So if you apply to Kings before January 31st, and you're in grade 12 right now. Um, chances are you don't have enough grade 12 um, final grades to um, for us to to, to base our um, admissions off of. Um, we're looking for English and four other grade 12 grades. Um, that is perfectly fine. You can still apply now, but you'll we'll be looking at your grade 11 marks and giving you um, provisional acceptance. So as long as you continue to do well in uh, in grade 12, you will be um, accepted into Kings. 99% um, of students who we, we, we give acceptance to provisionally end up getting acceptance, um, acceptance if their acceptance confirmed. So I wouldn't worry about that. But because we're looking at grade 11 grades up until January 31st, the um, minimum average is 85%. Um, once January to February switches. Uh, we're looking for your midterm grade 12 grades. And if you're applying in that period, because you're applying with grade 12 marks, the minimum average drops to um, by 5% to 80%. Um, the minimum average doesn't guarantee you admission to Kings. It's just the minimum um, average you have to hit to, um, to, uh, to gain um, possible acceptance. It's all based on um, the, the strength of the incoming class that year. Um, it, it, it changes from year to year, so there's no exact number I can I can give you. But um, if you sh if you you hit the minimum or you shoot a bit higher, um, a little bit higher than than it, you you should be fine for acceptance. But um, it's it, it's it's impossible to guarantee because it changes year to year. Um, and the other component outside of your grades is a journalism sketch. So what this is, it's a one thousand word. Um, uh, essay about yourself and um, why you want to uh, why you want to pursue journalism, and you can talk about your uh, kind of your past experiences um, as well. And the, the sketch is actually something that that can um, uh, confuse people is probably too strong of a word, but trip people up. So, uh, actually, let's go, Jenna and David. You both had to write a journalism sketch when you applied. Do you have any tips um, about how to how to write one? Whoever, whoever wants to go, David looks like you. Um, I, I think I, I might have done mine the wrong way. Um, I, I got myself all worked up thinking that it was, it had to be the best thing I've ever written, and I need to put hours and hours and hours of work into ensuring that every point of of my personal self and where I excel needs to be highlighted. Um, but. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. It's it's more just trying to get a good picture of of who you are and and why you want to go to the school. And I guess what I'd say off of that is don't overthink it. Yeah, I guess maybe I'll I'll get back to you in a second here, Jenna. But Brian, do do you have any um, do you have any tips for the journalism sketch? Oh, well, just be honest. Uh, don't try to tell us what you think we want to hear. Um, we don't need that. You know, we need to just know who you are and what your interests are. And the sketches that I've read, uh, well, at least for those students who, because I am on one of the admissions committees, the sketches that I've read have tended to be just that. Uh, this is this is about storytelling. That's what journalism is. Um, so we want to see how well you can write ultimately, right? So don't think, oh, you know, got to impress these folks with 
what with all the amazing stuff I've done or whatever, because the fact of the matter is all of you have amazing stories just by having lived. What we do want to see, though, is how you can take the experiences you have had in life and articulate them in writing. So we are going to be taking a look at uh, how well you structure your writing. And uh, when I applied to university, I ran, I ran my essay by uh, one of my teachers um, before I sent it in. And so, you know, go, feel free to do that too and get somebody else to look at it and see what they think of it. Great, great, great insight, Brian. And Jenna, you've, you've had to write one last year. Um, what, did, what did you do for your, for your journalism sketch? Um, I will just my general like approach to writing is just to put everything that's in my head onto the page and then you know trim it down from there and refine from there and I remember being very very proud of my opening line for my journalism sketch which was as soon as I got over wanting to become a princess I knew I wanted to be a journalist and I was so proud of myself for that line I just remember that specifically but I remember I related um, specifically my past experiences in alternative education, like because I went to a Montessori school for a lot of my life, to Kings and why I thought that would be a really good fit for me because of like just the way that I like to learn and how I had gone about my education in the past. And I remembered like, yes, talking about like my accomplishments a little bit and extracurriculars, but mostly just like really relating it um, like from my heart about why King specifically because and then also talking about why journalism specifically because there are lots of journalism programs out there but King's is so unique in its environment and its experience that I really wanted to bring that up in my um, in my sketch as well. So that's wonderful, Jen. I mean, one of the hardest things to, uh, to do in journalism is writing a strong lead. So uh, that's, that's a great one right there. And I also want to mention in relation to the journalism sketch, it, it, if you if you want some like journalism experience to put down on, on your sketch, um, right now um, we're running a uh, photojournalism competition for high school students. Um, so there's more information on the website and I, uh, I can send it to you uh, tomorrow, but essentially uh, what we're looking for is um, eight to 10 photos that um, tell a story of a specific um, loca uh, location. It's, called, it's a sense of place, essentially. So we've had people in the past um, do photo essays of, uh, of their hometowns, of a specific like innovation wing of their school. Um, I think, Jenna, correct me if I'm wrong, you participated in that last year, didn't you? Oh, we might... Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I, sorry. I think my internet was a little slow. Uh, yeah. That's okay. Yeah, yours was. You, you took it. Uh, you're showing your friend. I think a little. Like, just... Yeah, I kind of took a bit of a different approach to it because I really, I really like photography and I enjoy portraits specifically. So I kind of like I did a bunch of portraits of one of my friends and then was kind of like more relating it to the prompt through. Um, through the captions and the little introduction that I wrote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was, it was actually like, it was stunning um, uh, portrait photography. Uh, uh, and you can, uh, you can see a few, I think Jenna, we, you can see Jenna, one of Jenna's photos on uh, online as well. Um, so if you want some journalism experience, you can certainly go do the, the, the journalism, photo journalism competition um, online as well. The, um, the workshop that was run is, is, is there to be uh, for viewing as well. So you can watch the workshop if you're a bit unsure of kind of what direction to go. So I just wanted to, uh, to plug that too. Um, and then, well, leads us to the next step. So, I mean, you can do the photojournalism competition. Um, if you're close to Halifax, if you're traveling here at all, um, you can book a campus tour. Um, one of our campus tour guides who are current students will walk you around and, and show you around um, on the campus um, during the academic term. So from January to uh, the beginning of April, if you book a morning tour, you will also get a foundation or program lecture as, as a part of that tour. And um, there's also, uh, you can register and watch a webinar. We have lots of webinars coming up. Um, 
about different topics about Kings. There's one about FIP that happened last week that you can rewatch. Um, there's, of course, this one. There's also a few coming down about scholarships and living in Halifax. So uh, be on the lookout for those. And of course, if you haven't already, uh, you can uh, apply, apply to Kings as well. If you need any, if you have any questions about applying, um, you can email me. I'll put my email in the, in the chat once we uh, get going with the Q&A. So yeah, so um, this is the question and answer session. I'm just going to uh, st stop sharing my screen so you can see our faces. Um, so, um, oh yeah, I should also highlight the, when I say FIP, I, I mean the, the, the foundation year program. That is um, uh, the, the first year program where students um, are spending a full year kind of reading groundbreaking books from the ancient world um, all the way to the present day. Um, and um, you're doing that alongside with, with journalism in your first year. I, I, if you have any questions about the foundation program, again, feel free to email me. I can go into it more specifically. I do want to make sure we're focused um, a bit more on journalism for this, uh, for this um, webinar. But if you have any questions about the foundation program, please feel free to let me know. And if you hear anybody at King say FIP, that's the common acronym. Um, in journalism, you learn that you should not use acronyms because not everybody uh, understands them. And I just got uh, burnt right there. Um, yeah, so yeah, if you have any questions, please put them into the, the Q&A. We don't have any questions right now, so I'm gonna start us off. And this is a question that all of you can answer. I'll start with um, just David, because he's closer to me on the screen. Um, David, what would, if you had a, what would your piece of advice be for kind of incoming first year students? Ooh, that is a, that is a wonderful question. Kind of a, a piece of advice before arriving at Kings or in their first um, year? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's take it from that direction. If, if you need some time to think of Jenna or Brian, if you have an answer for this, feel free to, to jump in first year um, thinking about my first year um, oh listen just listen and take lots of notes that's the that's the year where your learning curve is the steepest and uh, I really hope you all take notes um, I didn't take enough notes uh, I took I used to take tons of notes in um, some of my non-journalism courses because I figured, well, I didn't really know much about philosophy and some of the other electives I was taking when I was at TMU. If I slip and say Ryerson, please excuse me. It's fairly recent name change. Um, journalism, I think I probably thought I, I knew quite a bit about it because I come from Quebec where we have a, a, a system in between high school and university called SAGEP. It's sort of like a prep school slash community college. So I did a lot of journalism there came into TMU thinking that I knew a lot and I didn't know a thing. Humility is really important. Like just assume you know nothing, keep your ears open, take lots of notes, ask lots of questions. Uh, David, did you come up with, a, with an answer? So I, I have an answer, but I, I have to credit it to somebody else. Um, last year, uh, I believe partway into the year, the, the, previous journalism director uh, put out a, a video of, of tips for first year students. And one thing that really hit me as something that should have been obvious to me, but I, it just kind of changed the way that I think about things was the, I, I think he worded it as don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And what he meant by that was not everything needs to be the best thing you ever do. Sometimes all that matters is getting the basics in, learning the repetition and, and just getting it done. Sometimes uh, uh, you, you get into uh, uh, a bit of a rut where you, you, you spend hours and hours doing things or maybe you miss a deadline or, or, or something like that because you you think it's not good enough, but when it comes down to it, it's better to do it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Thanks, David. And uh, Jenna, you are um, currently a first year student. So do you have any advice to maybe the group or even to your to yourself last year coming into, into this role? Uh, yeah, I think the biggest thing, especially, or one of the biggest things that we learn in journalism is that editing is everything. So I think just getting your assignment done several days before the due date and giving yourself time to edit it and go over it. And also utilizing um, the wonderful professors and teaching staff that we have at King's. Uh, because as my tutor told me about the journalism writing coach, because there is one specifically for journalism, is um, the writing coach isn't to make bad writers good, it's to make good writers great. And everybody should be utilizing the coaches and your tutors who have a wealth of knowledge um, in order to just take your writing from good to great and really just to enrich your experience and knowledge. Wonderful. Thanks, Jenna. And uh, for me, I'll, I'll just say consume as much journalism as possible. You know, re go on the CBC app, read, read what's going on in your local community or um, read the local paper. Um, watch if you don't have a if you don't watch tv at home you can go online and um kind of watch some uh some news some quick news um news coverage uh through video or you can turn on the radio you can listen to uh information morning on cbc in the morning or maybe the world at six at 6 p.m and just try to consume as much news as possible that will kind of give you understanding of what uh you know what you're expected to do um, once you get into journalism school, which is, which is tell stories. Um, so we have a question here. Um, so I'm going to take this one on, but I'm going to spin it a little bit afterwards to kind of, um, take it, give it a more journalism lens. So if you go to Kings, are you able to play sports team at da sports teams at Dalhousie? Uh, so the answer to that is Dalhousie has three classifications of sports teams. They have tier one, tier two, and tier three. Um, tier one is what would be known as youth sports. So that would be um, hockey, basketball, um, volleyball, soccer, um, and these these sports teams will play in the U sports. It's the top division um, in Canadian University for sports. For those teams, you have to be a Dalhousie student to play for those teams. So if you were if you wanted to play for a, a top a tier one team or interested in journalism, Brian mentioned this earlier. A lot of Dal students actually pursue the journalism minor here at Kings. So that is a way you can be a Dalhousie student, but still um, get journalism experience and um, that you're an education that you, that you might be looking for. Um, but Dal also has tier two and tier three teams, which King students have played. I know they've played for in the past. Um, that would be field hockey, that would be lacrosse, that would be rowing, um, sailing, um, water polo, polo, there's countless, there's lots of teams there um, that Dal Dalhousie has that King students can play for in tier two and tier three. Um, but uh, for tier one, um, you have to be a Dalhousie student and that's vice versa too. For the King sports teams, if you want to play for those, you have to be a King student, you can't be a Dalhousie student. And Jenna, yeah, go, go for it. Yeah, so just something to add to that is in the journalism program, I have a friend who's on the soccer team and plays for Kings soccer, and I have a friend who's on the rugby team, who plays for Kings rugby, all in the journalism program. And then also me and some of my friends play Dal intramurals, and Dal has a great intramurals program as well. Uh, we played soccer in the fall season, and we pride ourselves on being the only Kings team to play at the highest level of Dal soccer, also the only Kings team. But you know what, it's very fun. And even if you don't play uh, the highest, like like the highest division of um, Dow sports, there are still so many different ways to get involved with that. Thanks, Jenna. And um, yeah, so I just wanna say, the reason I know so much about Dalhousie sports is I used to be the sports editor for the Dalhousie Gazette. Um, David is currently the editor in chief of the Gazette. Uh, Jenna uh, contributes as well, but there's also the King's Watch, which are, is our own uh, magazine here at King's, which David also used to work for. Um, and there's uh, Dalhousie CKDU Radio. So there, there's a lot of opportunities to get involved um, extracurricularly in journalism as well. And I'd like to pass this one off actually to David, because he's had a lot of extracurricular work 
um, in journalism through the campus publication. So David, could you just tell me about your experience uh, with both the Watch and the Gazette and any other work you've you've been doing? Sure. sure. Um, so I, I guess when I was in first year, I started uh, as the at that point, there was an online editor of uh, The Watch or The Watch magazine. There's a few different names for it. Um, it mainly focuses on, uh, say, longer, more multimedia-focused journalism, uh, text or text-based journalism. Uh, a lot of it's uh, really high-quality art content. Um, I, I was the, the online editor there, and then I was the news editor, and then I was the editor-in-chief over the, my first three years of my degree. Uh, and then last year, I switched to being the editor-in-chief of the Gazette. Um, honestly, doing it at the same time as your degree is so rewarding, because right as you're doing, right as you're learning all these skills and doing assignments, um, you're getting another um, another avenue to practice everything and apply it and get a new testing ground. And there's some times where maybe there's something that I want to try in class and there's not an avenue for it. I can just come over to the Gazette and try it out. Um, it's It's honestly really rewarding. And another thing I'll mention about it, if you are, say, financing your own degree or if you are uh, looking for some extra cash. Campus journalism is a, a really great way to do it. Um, they, by all means, are real jobs. Um, yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much, David. And um, so, Brian, I'll, I'll ask you a question here. Um, for students who I don't know, might be shy or not sure if their writing is strong enough or just have some uh, uh, insecurities about going into, into the journalism program, what would your suggestion or, or advice be, be for them? There's a lot to do in journalism and you don't have to be out front. Um, I'm a more introverted person. Uh, it takes me time to warm up to even do a webinar like this. And so I got into journalism thinking I wanted to be a television anchor only to realize I was way too shy to do that. So uh, what does that mean? Does that mean I like get out of the, get out of this path and go a different path? No. What ended up happening was uh, partway through my career, I took a detour into producing. So in a, in a producer job, you're, in, you're behind the scenes, you're focusing on the big picture of putting together, in my case, it was putting together local television newscasts. And I did that for CTV, Global and CBC, uh, mostly in Montreal, but also Toronto and here in Halifax. And it was unbelievable. It was so exciting. I mean, you know, you spend most of your day uh, bring, take, taking a look at everything that's gone on in the world and then deciding what order to put the stories in. You get to sit next to famous people because, you know, like when I was growing up in Montreal, the big anchors were the two CTV news anchors, and I got to work with them sitting right next to the same people I grew up watching. And then in the last hour of your shift, it's even more exciting because you go to the control room and you're the control room producer too. So, you know, when the director points to that screen and says, everybody go and the lights go on, you're expected to be the leader and make those decisions. And so in all those positions, um, I don't have to worry about being seen. I can be uh, anonymous, but yet I still have has had a deeply fulfilling uh, career. I did have a fulfilling start to my career as a reporter, um, but producing is more uh, more my cup of tea. So for those of you who are who are more introverted and more shy, there are opportunities in journalism to let your work uh, speak for you. Uh, and um, you can uh, have a really fulfilling career either in text-based journalism or, or for myself uh, in television, but yet not on TV. So it's really quite amazing. And, and the, I got to say, producers make more money than reporters. So that's something you can shoot for uh, a little bit later on. I saw somebody had a question about my book. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a basketball fanatic. So my, my, my book is called Canada's Other Game. It's kind of a play off the hockey thing. 
uh, Canada's other game, basketball from Naismith to Nash. Um, this is, uh, I love this thing. I love my kids more, but I love this book uh, probably uh, next after my kids and wife. It's uh, all about Canadian basketball. You can get it on Amazon. And it tells the story of basketball strictly in Canada from a Canadian perspective. And uh, it was a lot of fun to, to write. And I did this years before I came to King's. Now I'm going to be doing a master's uh, of fine arts in creative nonfiction, where I'll actually learn from the best in the industry how to actually write a book. So then I'll write another book and it'll be much better. So I, I'm, one thing I got to mention to all of you about journalism is that um, it's a different type of writing you're learning. So what, I, what I've learned over the years is different styles. So I was really good at essay writing, let's say, when I was a university student. And then when I became a journalist, I had to learn newspaper writing when newspapers were a thing. And then I transitioned into television and I had to learn script writing, which is a different kind of writing. And then more recently, I wrote a book, so I had to learn book writing. These are all different styles of writing. And so I, one of the things I love is that I get to learn all sorts of different types of writing, and, and you can do that too. So we're not saying that you know, the news writing style is the only right way or correct way to write. What we're saying is that's a particular type of writing for journalism, for news reporting. But then we also teach you long form writing. You can learn that. And we teach you short form writing it for television and for podcasting. So it's, it's, you can learn all sorts of things. And uh, one of the other things is um, myself, and I mentioned Trina Roche, who teaches foundations. We're television people and the university uh, and the program is taking a turn now to where if you love uh, taking photos, if you love doing video, uh, Kings is a great place to come to learn that uh, now more than ever. Thank you, Brian. And uh, yes, I'll uh, have to give that book a read too. It's uh, I'm, I love sports and basketball as well in Canada. It's a great time for basketball in Canada for sure. Um, Jenna. So I wanted to ask you, um, so when students do the, uh, the first year of the Bachelor of Journalism Honors Program, they're doing it in, with the Foundation Year Program. Um, so can you just tell me what that's been like for you, balancing both, uh, both aspects um, this, this year? So the first year of King's is definitely mostly the Foundation Year Program. As was previously mentioned, we do it four days a week and do journalism one day a week. And the Foundation Year program is, as a lot of you probably know if you've been looking into Kings, is a very intense program. And we move through pretty much since the start of humanity, um, like the greatest theological, philosophical, and literary works. And we move very quickly. And it's a lot of ideas at once. Um, and I went in expecting a lot of reading, and it is for sure a lot of reading. And I think the biggest thing, uh, not to say I haven't been enjoying it, I I think the whole concept is incredibly interesting and enlightening and I really see like the things that we learned about show up in our journalism classes as well. And I think just foundation year program adds like is the King's experience. Like when we talk about the King's experience, the foundation year program is the core of that. Um, and it is really like, I wouldn't change doing it for anything, just the whole like, camaraderie of doing the exact same thing as all of your friends on campus and going through it together um, is really amazing and fun to go through and journalism on top of that is actually a really big contrast there's a lot of writing in FIP and you and journalism is at its core writing but it's totally different kinds of writing and one of the hardest parts is learning to toggle between the two kinds because FIP is essays and is very literary writing and is very long form and is very academic. And journalism, we learn that um, you, what you write should be able to be understood by somebody with a university education and somebody with a middle school education. We write for the public and to be understood by all. And just having to kind of toggle between the little rules in journalism from in the Canadian press style and then also the more academic writing in FIP can be hard to get at first. Um, so kind of juggling between that is definitely a big thing to learn um, and fit. But I think even after the first couple of months, I really got the hang of it. And journalism within the foundation year program is quite smaller. Like I think there's only about 40 of us who are journalism honor students within FIP. And um, 
it's really kind of nice going between like the bigger class sizes of FIP to the smaller ones in journalism. And I do have like several of my friends that like of everybody that does FIP and is one of my friends, like several of them do journalism as well. And it's really nice just kind of being able to get like the two different experiences and two different sides of writing within one year. Wonderful, thanks. Thanks so much, Jenna. And you did touch a little bit on the next question. I would like to say we're running low on time. So if you have any last minute questions, please uh, please ask them in the, the Q&A. But this question here is about what are the average class sizes in uh, journalism courses at King? So um, for Jenna right now, she's in the Foundations of Journalism class. So that's a the lecture component. There's about 40, 40 people, 40 or 50, I think. Um, and then you get broken down into up, up more. OK. And uh, I'll, I'll let Jenna answer that in a second. But you you get um, then you get broken down into smaller tutorial groups where you're with about 10 to 15 students. Um, and then after the first year, you you get um, kind of within your Bachelor of Journalism cohort a, a bit more and the classes you take um, with them, you're with that group from second year all the way to fourth year. And that's anywhere from about 22 to 30, 30 students. And, um, and then the workshops, they also, that group kind of um, uh, joins the uh, Bachelor of Journalism, the, the one-year program, which also exists here at King's and uh, you get into smaller workshops. So basically the most you're gonna have in, a, in, in your actual class um, where, where you're learning and it, from, a, from a instructor is about 30 and then the lo lower end could be about 10 or 15. Um, yeah, David, you wanted to, uh, to chime in here. In, uh, in, in Brian's class, uh, we had six. Uh, we had two instructors. There was Brian and uh, technical instructor, Paul Robinson. Um, if you were talking about student to teacher ratios, like find me a better one. It, it's, it's fantastic and you get so much one one time. It's amazing. And I do, and I dare say that if I'm going to compare Kings to my alma mater, um, my alma mater, my alma mater doesn't come close at TMU. I mean, at Kings, a thousand students total, and then once you're into your final year, uh, you're talking about real small classes, a lot of one-on-one -on -one retention for sure. Wonderful. And uh, Jenna, is there anything like you like to chime in about kind of your class size experience in in the, in the foundations class? Oh, it looks like she might be, uh, she might be. Yeah, oh, sorry, my yeah. wife, I was a little unstable, but I think it's good now. Um, yeah, so in on the days we have journalism, we have three different parts of it. We have a morning thinking lecture, which I think typically has like, that's bigger. It's about 75 people, I'd say, um, maybe slightly more, but a lot of Dow students take it as an elective. Um, and then in the afternoon, we have an, a writing lecture, which is slightly smaller, probably closer to 50 people. And then immediately following that, we have our tutorials, which as Josh previously mentioned, is about 10 to 15. And it's a lot more one-on-one -on -one time and tutorials are my personal favorite. You just kind of break down the assignments and get more like to ask questions if you have them and just to discuss among your peers. And like, that's usually my favorite hour of the week is our journalism tutorials. And the tutors make it so much fun. And it's just like, it's just, I can't even describe, it's just the best. Wonderful. And um, yeah, I don't see any more questions in the Q&A. So uh, we're going to, uh, to wrap it up here. I just want to mention, if any of you have any, have any further questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me. You can um, take a picture of the slide right here. Uh, so my email is, it's simple, it's josh.young at ukings.ca. You can also text or call me at 902-717-2678. And um, I'll be happy to kind of answer any of your, your questions or pass you off to somebody who, who can for sure. Um, before we go, um, Jenna, David, Brian, is there anything else you'd like to say um, before, before we log off, Brian? Just that journalism was great to me, you know, I mean, it, uh, I did it my whole adult life. 
And um, I got to uh, do exactly what I wanted to do since high school. And I had a chance to uh, travel. I had a chance to go to uh, the, the North. I had a tra- chance to meet famous people like the uh, Queen, Tiger Woods, you know, uh, people, fam- Wayne Gretzky, people like that. And so um, I just think that it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to, um, to travel, uh, to meet uh, new people, and to just be on the front lines of what in the future is going to be history, you know, what young people will be reading in the history books in 50 years, you would, you would get a chance to have actually written some of those stories. So it's been great. And I highly recommend it as a career. That's a beautiful way to put it. Um, David or Jenna, is there anything else? Yeah, David, go for it. Uh, I, I guess the one thing I'd end on is uh, if you come to Kings, don't be a stranger. Wonderful. Yeah. Th- yeah. Thanks, David. Yeah. There's certainly a, a lot of people you can, you can meet. And if you see any of us walking around, please feel free to, to say hi. We'll be very happy to, to welcome you to, to campus for sure. And uh, yeah, Jenna, is there anything else you'd like to say? Yeah. Just when I was watching all these webinars last year and came out to visit, I kept hearing everybody describe like the King's experience as a magical thing. And it really is. It's so hard to describe. You just kind of have to come out and experience it for yourself because it's unmatched. It's my favorite experience of my life so far. Wonderful. Thanks, Jenna. And yeah, I'd like to also say if you if you want to experience um, the King's Campus, uh, campus tours will be happening um, all throughout the spring. And uh, we'll also have a, a winter open house coming up in, in February as well, if you want to uh, to experience that too. Anyway, thank you um, all for joining us here uh, this evening, and um, I'll, I'll be in contact uh, with you guys uh, tomorrow with, with more information. Um, again, if you need anything, feel free to reach out. Uh, as David said, don't be a stranger. And with that, I wish you all a good night, and thank you again for joining us. Take care. Bye, everybody.